Mathematics includes the study of quantity, structure, space, and change. Math can be so complex, it could be considered strange. Hey guys, let's go over the module 8 test, 929 version A. Let's talk about Pedro over here. Uh, Pedro is thinking about adding a salad bar to his restaurant. He randomly surveys customers to get their thoughts on an, on the addition. One of the questions... One of the question asks, would you enjoy, I'm going to circle some keywords I notice in here, fresh and tasty salad with your meal over those greasy and unhealthy options? It seems like Pedro here is biased. He wants me to eat the salads and he's saying whatever I'm eating over there is greasy. So how can I ask this question without biased? Um... um would you like a salad bar? Or would you want a salad bar at the restaurant? I don't I can take out those orange words because those are biased. Question number two, the marketing department of an online Retailer plans to survey customers to determine whether they would prefer a 20% off coupon. So I'm going to circle that. Option one or free shipping. Option two. They're trying to decide between the two different methods of surveying. The company will include the survey in an email. Okay, I like this word. All their customers. Um, so is this one stratified? Uh, self or B, simple, random, or self-selected volunteer? And the answer for this one is self-selected. Because the people who are getting the email, they can choose to respond. Just like you guys get a bunch of emails as a student, choose to respond to the email. So you volunteer yourself whether or not you want to get the email. Question number three, match each study subject with a study type that should be used. Okay, we're looking for the one that has an observation, an observation. Um, okay, now this one's a little bit confusing, the video game one, B, because it says uh, before having to return to the checkpoint. But you're not doing anything to these players, you're just watching. They want to know it, and it looks like you're just watching. So observational study is B, which one's an experiment that puts them in two groups and then do something to them. Um, I'm thinking this one would be because um, you have the new cat food, so and then you can versus the old cat food, and based on those two, like which one would bring more hairballs? I don't even know what that is. Question number four, true or false? The experimental probability is never equal to the theoretical probability. Uh, the answer for this one would be false. It is possible it happens. You know, if you do, um, remember the theoreticals, like probability of a heads, that's going to be 50%. And well, if you flip the coin and it gets heads and you basically do it one time, that's 50%. So they do match and they, that can happen. Number five, a random number generator was used to select a number from 1 to 12. A number was selected 360 times and the results were shown. Okay, so this is my simulation. This is also called a frequency table. It's just showing me how it happened. And this is actually uh, another word I'm going to put in there is the experimental because this is actually what happened. Okay, so the theoretical probability of an 11. So theoretical, what happens in theory? So you wouldn't need any of this. Theoretical probability is there's 12 numbers and it's one out of 12. So if I just put that into my calculator, I get 0 0.08, and repeating three. And then if you just multiply this number by 100, basically move it to decimal places, you're going to get an answer of 8.33%.
Number six, baseball multiple choice last player to achieve a batting average of 400, they call it, was Ted Williams in 1941. If Ted Williams was batting, which simulation would be est- would be used to estimate the probability that he gets a hit? Select all that apply. Okay, basically you just want one that has an average or a decimal of 0. 0.40. Using a regular die, okay, so a regular die has six, so you're saying four, four out of six is um, two thirds, which is 0. 0.67, and those do not match, so not A. B, use a spinner divided into five equaled sections and red and blue represent a hit. So this would be two out of five, which would give you, um, if you double it, you get four out of 10, which is 0 0.40, which would match. So that would match ours. So B makes sense. Let's go to the uh, other ones here. Uh, C, place four dimes and 10 pennies in a bag and then select one at random. The dime represents a hit. So remember, you need total, which is uh, four plus 10, and this would give you the 15. And the dimes represents the hit, so what you want. So this would be uh, four out of 15, which would give you 26.7% and that's not what we're looking for. These are random number generated with the numbers one through a thousand and one through four are considered a hit. So one through a thousand, that's the total. And then one through four, um, this is gonna be 0.0004, one, two, three, no, too many. And this does not represent um, 0. 0.400. And then the last one, place four yellow and red, four yellow and six red chips in the bag and select one chip at a time. The yellow represents a hit. So this would be four over four plus six. So this would be four over 10, which gives you 0. 0.4. I like that one. So the choices, the answers are B and E. B and E. Calculate the mean and standard deviation for the set of data by hand and show your work. Hint, draw the large table and chart. All right, so I went ahead and calculated the mean. X bar equals the summation over N. So when I add up all of those numbers, 15.6 plus 14.8, and keep going, get 206.7. And then if you... Um, n equals 12. There's 12 numbers on the list. I put the numbers right above. So then if you just divide that number by 12, you're going to get x bar equals 17.225. Okay, we're going to need that because we're going to calculate um, this next one, standard deviation by hand. So this is standard deviation by hand. We're not just punching into the calculator. I'm gonna take my list of numbers and I'm gonna put them into my table here. Fifteen point nine and nineteen point three. Okay, next we are going to take these numbers and we're gonna subtract it from the mean. This number you just found out it's seventeen point two two five. So 15.6 minus this, and then 14.8 minus this. And basically you're doing that all the way down. I expect you to show that work. And then I'm just gonna write out all the answers. Save some time. 
So I'm gonna get negative 1.625. Negative 2.425.975. Draw some lines might help us. Point zero seven five negative one point eight that one two five negative one point two two five five point zero seven five negative point eight two five Negative point zero two five. Oh, this one's positive one point zero seven five. Uh, negative one point three two five. And two point zero seven five. Okay, basically, we're going to take these values. We just subtract it from the mean, and now we're going to square them. Let's do some magic. Oh, try that again. Okay, so we're just going to take those values. Oops, that didn't work well. We'll just write the numbers. Negative 1.625. We're going to square that. And then I get 2.625. Squared. No, 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 no. What's wrong? Negative 2.425 squared will give me 5.88. Uh, 0.975 squared will give me 0 0.95. 0 0.075 squared gives me 0 0.00. Um, 6, negative 1.825 squared will give me uh, 3.33, 3, negative 1.225 squared will give me uh, 1.5, and 5.075 squared will give me 25.8. I want you to notice that all these... Um, Answers in orange will be positive because you're squaring it. Negative 0.825 giving me 0.68. Negative 0 0.025 will give me uh, nothing really. 0 0.00625. I just wanted that to register. That's why I added a bunch of zeros. Uh, 1.075 squared. This is going to be 1.56. Negative 1.325. Squared gives me 1.76. That's a 1. And 2.075 squared will give me 4.305625. OK, the next thing is to get the summation. The summation of all my values. So if you add up all of these, um, you'll get something close to this. 47.625. And basically now we're going to take summation and divide it by n. So this would be 47.625 divided by the 12 numbers. 
and now I'm going to change it to a symbol because this is what standard deviation is. When you do that, you will get something close to 3.996875. And basically what we need to do is now just take the square root of this number, which you will get. So that sigma O with an, a tail and squared, that is variance. But if you take square, you get standard deviation and you'll get close to like 1.99 or approximately two. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Number eight, real estate. Tyrone has been studying the housing market in nearby towns. He has recorded the prices of the houses sold recently. The data shows housing prices in thousands of dollars. So if you didn't know, you just take a thousand and then multiply it by that number. So that house right there represents $236,000, which is a bargain right now, if you didn't know. Okay, write a statement um, that compares the housing prices in the two towns using the mean and standard deviation. Okay, the word compare means I need to do my socks. And then for each of these, let's do pink over here. I need to basically find the, the mean and the standard deviation. And we'll do blue over here. Let me go ahead and do show one list and I'll just show the answer for the second list. So if I were doing this, if I was using my graphing calculator Stat, edit, go up to your list, press clear, enter, do that for the second list. Okay, so I got 180 and, whoops. One eighty, one ninety two, one sixteen, three twenty six, ninety eight, two eighty eight. 204, 214, 206. Stat, calc, one of our stats. And I get 202.7. 202.7, write that down. 202.7. And standard deviation is 68.1. All right, so I'm gonna make a quick graph to look at the shape of town C. I guess I could do this on both of them. So that'll be 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, and then uh, 400,000. So this is pink. So 354. Uh, 212, 186, 259, 124, 110, uh, 236, and I can also use this to uh, put them in bins, 242 and then 175. So maybe quantity or count over here, one, two, three, four, five. And then I have zero here, then I have four. Four here, and then one here. 180, you can just tally it, 180, 192, 116, 326, 98, 288, 204, 214, and 206. So one, two, three, four. This one has three. One has four, and that one has 
so if I do socks, I can compare these distributions. I can say that the blue town A is more symmetrical. And then I can say for the pink, um, we can say uh, skewed left for town C. Okay, can we see any outliers? Um, no unusuals. I mean, I guess you could say they both have a, a 326 and 354, but nothing super crazy. Uh, measures of center. We could say that town C has a greater um, mean of 210k, 210,000, uh, then uh, town A has theirs at 202.7 or 203k. So that means if you want to buy in town C, it's going to cost a little bit more. Um, so we have the shape, outliers, center, and then spread. Um, that means town C, town C has a greater has a greater spread of sixty nine point three. Then town A. And what does that mean? You can get a really expensive house or a super cheap house in town A. Okay, number nine. Classify each random uh, classify each random variable as discrete or continuous. Discrete means count. Continuous means it could be a fraction or a decimal. So distance a car travels, say 102.6 miles, that would be a continuous. And total rainfall. Um, let's just say 4.2 inches, uh, that would also be continuous. Number 10, a company makes a probability distribution of the ages of the workers within the company and makes a claim that the age of the workforce is very diverse. Identify the flaws or mistakes and the representations. Select all that apply. Okay, so counting by tens, this is good. Okay, over here I see counting by fives. But then over here, this is more than five. So that's inconsistent. Same thing over here, not counting by fives. They should have just kept going from like zero to five, six to 10, like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Is the sample size too small? Let's see. Um, the distribution is discrete when it should be continuous. No, we don't want continuous. Discrete's fine because it's just counting how many workers and their age. The intervals are grouped inconsistently. No, they are by fives. So it's not that bad. Okay, look at this one. D says the label of the y-axis indicates potentially different data from the, from the company's claim. Okay, so they're saying it's very diverse, but I'm going to guess that if you had to do the data, and we, we don't have all the data, so if you actually did it by like, it would, you wouldn't hire my kids, right? 5 to 10, <laughs> 6 to a 10, 11 to 15. Does that make sense? Um, 16 to 20, 
um, 21 to 25. And so you're going to have no data or you wouldn't really hire kids. So you might have like day like this, but I'm trying to show you that most of the data will be, you know, something like this. So I think it'll still be skewed. So D sounds good. The report is not misleading. Um, I mean, they do hire a bunch of different people. They wouldn't hire kids. And on the back end, you know, people are retired, so I think that's okay. And the sample size is too small. Okay, let's see how many people. So that's like 15, 25, 30, um, 30. I'm just rounding. 10. So 70, 90, 100 people uh, for the whole company. Now, I don't know um, how big the company is. So because we don't know that information, um, this is probably, they're saying, the textbook is saying this is an answer, but they didn't really tell you that. If they said they, they talked to like six people, then I would say it's way too small. Um, but for the class purposes, I'll be marking D and E. Number 11, a normal distribution, so that one you can just draw, has a mean of 48.4 and a standard deviation of 5.375. And the range of values represents the middle 95%. So 95% is two standard deviations. 95% is equal to two standard deviations. So one, two, and a one, two. So I would just subtract 5 from there. And um, if I keep if I just round by subtracting 5 from each of these, so minus 5, my, well, it's a decimal, but I'm doing this without a calculator. So 43, 37, this one, and then I keep adding 5 this way. So uh, 50, 53, and then it's like 58-ish. 59, so B is the correct answer. Okay, number 12, free response. Find the area under the curve within a Z um, less than 1.98. Round your answer to the nearest 10,000 if necessary. Let's draw a quick picture. So if this is a z-score of 0, negative 1, negative 2, right? 1, 2, 3. So this would be positive 1, positive 2. So 1.98 is like right here. And I can get really close to this number just using the empirical rule, but this is not... Okay, so if I look at 1.98, so I have 1.9, I have uh, 0.8, and I go down this way, this way, so 0 0.976159, 976, 976, Um, so the area is 0 0.97615 and 10 thousandths, so this would be the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and this is the ten thousandths. So that means, so our answer is going to be 0 0.9761. Okay, number 13, a survey asked uh, 1,862 college students how many hours they work each week. The average time was 18 point hours with a standard deviation of 3.7 hours. Use a confidence interval to determine the maximum error of the estimate, then estimate the mean population. All right, I wanted to show you guys a couple of ways using Desmos. I just press functions, go down to distributions, Oh, past it. There it is. Normal dist. Okay, the mean, it doesn't tell you, but it's 0, 1 because it's a normal curve. Uh, 
check cumulative probability CDF. Minimum is negative infinity, negative 9,999, and the max is 1.98. This tells you basically the z-score, and there you see your area is 0.9761. Uh, to do that with a graphing calculator, I press second list, no, second vars, and then you want the second option, normal CDF, cumulative. And when you click on that, uh, I typed in, it tells you your lower bound, so negative 9,999, your upper bound 1.98, your mean zero comma uh, standard deviation is one, and you get an answer of 9.761. Okay, so I'm gonna have to use the maximum error of the estimate, or margin of error, and that is E equals Z times S square root of N. The 90% confidence interval gives me a z-score of 1.645. So let's draw a picture. I have, um, this is my n value. This is my center, 18.8. .8, and standard deviation of 3.7. So a 90% confidence interval means, um, you know, 1.645. So you have scores, and then you have Z. And so a Z of 1.645 is like right here. That's negative two. So we're trying to, we already know that this is going to be 90%. We're trying to basically figure out what's the number in white right there. Okay, so if I know this is 1.645, my standard deviation is 3.7, and the square root is 1862. E equals 1.645 times... 3.7 divided by the square root of 1862. Put that in my calculator. 1.645 times 3.7 is going to give me um, 6.0865. Let's say you were doing this kind of separately. So the square root of 1862 gives me 43.15. Then if I divide those two numbers, 6.0865 divided by 43.15, this is going to give me an E value of 0.14. So I got my picture. Um, I got a formula. We got a z-score, and then we are solving here. And after we solve this, we need to get a range. So p hat plus or minus um, e, or you can also, because this is not a proportions, this is a estimate the mean. So this problem would be X bar. So my X bar center is 18.8 .8 plus or minus 0.14. And so if you take 18.8 .8 minus 0.14, you're going to get 18.66. And then I'm going to add 18.8 .8 plus 0.14. This will give me 18.94. So that'll be choice A and point six C and A. These are our correct answers. That's it. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Later. Bye. Um Mr. Ang, I have a question. Do I have to divide by zero? No. According to the Ten Commandments of Math, number nine, 
thou shalt not divide by zero.